Kevin. What's going on? Welcome to Detroit. Yes, sir. Welcome home. What is it like being here and not fighting on the card now that it's actually here? Uh, it, it's a little disappointing. I wish I would have done it, uh, especially with how much the city has come out and really support it. I think I would have brought even a, a better demographic uh, and really like represent Detroit better. But, you know, it's everything happens for a reason. I brought him out this time. I'll bring him out again next year, and I'll headline that card. Did you try and get on this card? Like, was there a thought of doing that after the loss of Ferguson? Yeah, I, I tried to, but you know, with the Nothing with the commission, and uh, I was already in some hot water anyway. And yeah. it, it took me about two weeks to recover from that fight on the antibiotics, so uh, there was no way. And you know, my opponents were running short too, so it it, it looked like uh, the closer that it got to it, the the less that looked like a possibility. But I would have hoped for it. And did you take some time off after that uh, the fight with Ferguson? You know, take get some R and R because you know it was a big fight, obviously for the interim title. Did did you get some uh, downtime? Yeah, for sure. I took about a month about a month or so off. Uh, I'm ready to get back up in there though. I'm like, I started to get that itch again. I said I wanted to take a long break. Uh, I said I maybe wanted to come back in July or something like that. I'm, I'm thinking April now. Like I wanna, I get that itch. Like I, I love to fight. This is what I, I got the most uh, fights in the shortest amount of time for a reason. That's what I love to do. After I take like a month of sitting around, like I'm ready to fight again. At, at 155 or you wanna go to 170? Yeah, I think uh, the more I sit on it, the more I'm letting my body heal. Uh, 155 is definitely where I'll stay. It's a lot of good fights for me. Uh, you know, I got you got the Khabib fight. I'm, I'm interested to see who who gonna win this Eddie and, and Justin fight. It's a lot of good fights for me. So I think I'm gonna stay at 155. 170 is a you know maybe maybe that in the future. But right now I got too much to handle at 155, and I've got to get back Tony in for that one. Would you do anything differently with the cut? Uh, you know, going into the last fight, it looked like it was a really rough one for you. Are you kind of planning a different strategy this time around ahead of your next fight? Yeah, no, nah, I'm. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna sit on it. I'm gonna sit on it. I'm gonna think. I'm gonna play around my weight a little bit. That's what's gonna take me till about April, uh, because I'm, I'm gonna really sit and, and, and play on my diet after the holidays. We'll, we'll see. We'll see how, how light I can walk around. Like right now, I'm, I'm sitting here about 188, uh, 187. So I, I can probably knock that down to about 178, and then uh, it'll make the cut a lot smoother on me. You mentioned Michael Chiesa broke your three thousand dollars sunglasses. Those ones are pretty nice. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, for, yeah, they're the same. They're the same ones. Uh, you know, shout out City Slick. He uh, he went ahead and fixed them for me. So uh, you know, they ain't perfectly fixed. You know, these are. They, I mean, they tough. But uh, you know, I'm in Detroit. You know, I gotta show off the buffs a little bit. You know, I gotta show some style to the folks. Are you feeling the love from people here? Like, do you feel like you sort of made it? Because I noticed yesterday when you came out, the weigh-ins, there was a big reaction from the people. They, they, they really gave you some love. Do you feel like you're the guy who came back and now you sort of made it and are getting you know that, 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 that reaction from your hometown fans? I've been doing fan signings and appearances all over the city uh, for the whole week that I've been here. And everywhere that I go, it, it seems like the, the folks really love me and the folks really, like, they, they, they understand me. And, and, and that kind of, like, drives it home for me. It makes me feel even better. Uh, I did a fan signing the other day right down the street from the from the house that we squatted in and you know that for me It's heartwarming and it, it, it really like re-motivates me. That's what makes me want to fight right now Like I'm like, yeah, let's get back in it. You know, I can see the people are behind me I can see the people really like feel me uh, So I, it, it, it motivates me it re-motivates me You know, I have to make a little bit of a little bit of money to go back out there and keep doing it And, and, and it reassures what I'm doing it for is this the first time that you come home as like an established UFC star and feel that kind of love? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, is it a bit surreal? It won't be the last time. It's no, the no. first time, but it won't be the last. You know, Detroit has changed so much since I left. Uh, even this whole downtown area is really booming. Uh, I'm thinking about buying a house here, here too. You know, I got a small house here already. I'm thinking about buying a, 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 a actual nice, sizable house. Uh, I have one here, have one in Vegas. Uh, you know, you never know. I might, you know, I'm have some tricks up my sleeve. I'm, I'm gonna do my thing. Uh, Robert Fallis is a left extreme couture. Did that affect you at all as far as uh, you know you working with him at all? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna have to see on that. You know, I'm going through a couple different changes. That's what's gonna take me so long to fight. You know, I'm changing my diet. Uh, I'm changing my management. Uh, Robert's changing out of, out of extreme couture. So we're we gonna see. We're gonna, we gonna have to sit on it. I'm gonna have to play with it. Uh, I'm thinking about bringing in other coaches too. Uh, I want to get some more work in with like uh, guys like Duke Rufus. Got you know guys like uh, uh, Brandon Gibson. Uh, you know, well, I'll, I'll see. I'll, I'll kind of bounce around a little bit. I'm, I've already been training in other places everywhere I go. Uh, I've been training down here at Michigan Top Team since I've been here. Oh, nice. I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep bouncing and uh, stealing ideas from everybody, but my, my, my team will remain the same.
Yeah, so you're going to stay in Vegas, though. You're not going to leave? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, okay. no, I'm, I'm, say, I'm in Vegas. A lot better yeah, no, nah, I got, I mean, uh, if, if I do end up buying a house here, it, yeah. it'll be for other reasons. You know, yeah. I'll bring back family or something like and, that. And we'll, speaking we'll of family, your brother's fighting in a couple weeks. Uh, you know, just give him a plug here. He's a flyweight fighter, uh, you know, doing doing big things. Yeah, yeah, my brother, uh, Keith Lee, yeah. uh, he's only had three professional fights, but the kid's a phenom. Uh, he, he's even better than me when I was at his age. He, he's 21 years old. Uh, he's going to be the next rising star. By this time next year, he'll already be in the UFC and established. Uh, I think he'll probably make his debut on that July card. Uh, we just got to get him get him rolling, get him some more fights. Uh, the kid's already, I mean, we have him sparring UFC fighters on a daily daily basis, and, and he's taking those guys out. Uh, those guys don't want to spar with him no more. So it's going to be hard to find him fights because nobody wants to take it. Uh, but we once he gets a couple more, he's he going to be in the UFC for sure, and he's going to be a force to be reckoned with at 135 or at 125. Uh, if Demetrius Johnson is still up there, my brother got something to say about that. Cool. He's fighting in a couple weeks, right? Yeah, yeah. He's uh, he's fighting December 16th uh, over in Grand Rapids. We'll, we'll go Which back. promotion? Uh, KOP. Oh, KOP. KOP, nice. yeah, yeah. So it's we, uh, combat. yeah, yeah. He's he going to go back. Uh, it's going to be a quick It's gonna be a quick fight. He's he going to go out there. He's going to knock the kid out. We'll have another one in Jan January. You know, we, we'll see. We'll see how the things shake up. Uh, get him a couple fights. He'll be in the UFC, and he's going after that championship run. You mentioned earlier, talking about if you were on this card, you being a bigger demographic. Were you referring to the African American community? Yeah, for sure. Uh, well, you know, like, why don't you think that? Why do you think the African American community is bigger in MMA? Is it? Why is it bigger? Why isn't, why isn't it bigger? I don't think it's, it's necessarily had that push yet. You know, I don't think that, that they've really uh, seen the money yet, there yet, uh, but that's just yet. I, I feel like it's still there. I feel like it's still there to be captured. Uh, there, There's about two or three big demographics that they miss, and I think that's one of the, the biggest ones. I think it could have been a home run with this card, uh, but if they come back, if they come back to Detroit next year, uh, I know they're coming to St. Louis in, in January. Uh, I'm going to try and appear for that one, you know, get around, see the city a little bit. and. Uh, even even as I'm here in Detroit, I'm I'm trying to go back to, to different schools that don't really know about MMA. Uh, that these boxing gyms where the African Americans, they, I mean, they, you know, we still stuck on boxing. Like I'm trying, you know, like we we, we taking it to the next level and uh, we bringing them into the new generation. And I, and I feel like uh, with guys like me, Tyrone, DJ, you know, like we we, we can do that and we can uh, really capture it. And I think that'll take the sport to the next level. Are you still? Are you like, when you talk to kids? Are you still like? Pretty much educating them what actually MMA is. A lot yeah, of that. yeah, I, I, I have to. Uh, you know, especially growing up here in Detroit, I said it earlier. Uh, you know, you even thought you had the rap ball or or you know football basketball something like that but you can fight too you know got guys stuck into boxing but uh mma is another venture to get to get what you want you can you can have the nice things that you want uh and mma is just another way of doing it so i'm, I'm trying to educate the folks you know they still think it's it's you know guys rolling around and all this and i'm like nah I go to these boxing gyms. I tell the boxers straight up, like y'all ain't real fighters. Like y'all, somebody lied to y'all a, a long time ago. I, if if you take take it out the ring, I'm tossing you on your head. You you'll be dead in under a minute. Like that's that's it's flat out. So um, um, even most of the kids, they always want to know how to fight. They always want to know how to defend themselves. Ninety percent of fights go to the ground uh, in the streets. So you you got to know what you're doing on there too. Were you like that growing up? Like you were like as a kid, like I want to be a boxer. Or were you always? Yeah, I, I mean, especially coming from Michigan, you know, we had Floyd Mayweather. Uh, everybody kind of looked up to Floyd. Uh, you know, you, you you had guys like Joe Lewis. You know, we had Tommy Thomas Hitman Hearns. Uh, you know, I gave uh, Tyrone Woodley a little tour of Detroit earlier. We we went around filming for Champ Camp, and I, you know, we showed the old Crunk Gym and and we showed these old boxing gyms. But now we we gonna open up some MMA gyms. You never know. I might open up one my damn self and uh, and really get this thing rolling. Kevin, have you been following any of Conor McGregor's outside the cage issues in recent weeks and just any thoughts on what he's been you know, going through? Yeah, that boy fucking up. <laughs> that boy fucking I mean, I think it's... Uh, look, I don't know, like, if the, if the rumors are true or whatever... I mean, he he better get his shit together, cause he he he's got a long mountain to climb. I I don't think he's uh you know people are saying oh is he gonna fight? Is he gonna do this? I, I take the man for his word. He say he's a fighter. I think he's gonna come back. He he has to come back and try and defend that title. Uh, and he's got a long mountain to climb up there. You know he's got he's got Tony. As soon as he comes back, Tony's gonna beat the hell out of him. As soon as he loses that one, I'm gonna beat the hell out of him. Uh, and then he's gonna be you know down in the dirt. So. That hundred million is cool and all. He's spending it fast. You can blow through that quick. Uh, ask Floyd Mayweather. Floyd then did that about six, seven times. Hundred million. I mean, you can blow through it. Uh, I don't think he really understands what he's getting himself into. If he's if he's really messing around with the the Irish mob, 
I don't think he really from the streets like that. He don't, he don't, I don't think he want none of that smoke, but uh, that's on him. So I'm just looking forward to his comeback and then uh, looking forward to taking him out after he gets his ass beat. Thanks, yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir.